Since its economic boom in the 1950s, the Sin City of Las Vegas has long been considered the glamorous home of entertainment. And one sport in particular has captured the synergy between the human thirst for risk, reward and violence. It is for this reason that boxing is often synonymized with the glitz and glamour that only America can provide, and why some of the biggest events in the sport's history have taken place there specifically. Recent years, however, have brought a scarcity of high-profile matchups between two US superstars. An increasingly fragmented landscape with multiple promoters and TV networks means that rarely are two noteworthy participants willing to share the grand stage together. But this April, at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, one superstar pairing is set to finally break that trend and treat American fight fans to the most anticipated domestic fight of 2023. Javonte Tank Davis, already a multiple world champion, brings with him a stellar reputation as one of the most supreme boxer punchers in the game. and Ryan Garcia, the social media sensation known for his matinee idol looks. Blinding hand speed with pinpoint accuracy, the young Californian seems to be only scratching the surface of his true potential. Oh, the left hand! There is a new tank in the 135 pound division! And in this edition, we recap the journeys of two fighters who, despite their similarities, have vowed to settle their disagreements in the ring. Why is that fight against Tank Davis so important to you? Because that's going to give me the respect I deserve. If he want it, let's get it. Both with a burgeoning fan base to create a fight which, in the current climate, the sport desperately needs. And one in which the outcome will forever become synonymized with the remainder of their careers. Welcome to the Javonte Davis vs. Ryan Garcia Countdown. The turn of the new decade brought with it a hotbed of fresh young talent. And one area in particular, the lightweight division, saw a spurt in supernaturally gifted fighters ready to set the sport alight. Listen, when they be doing all that, rah, 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 trying to hype themselves up, you know what time it is. Initially, it was ruled by the electrifying Vasily Lomachenko, who, with an extraordinary amateur background, thrilled audiences with wizardry never before seen in the ring. But when his reign collapsed at the hands of an ambitious upstart in Tiafimo Lopez, the division changed hands in quick succession, going through three different champions in less than three years. Oh, what a right hand! Tiafimo's tenure was short-lived, as he suffered a huge upset loss to George Cambosis, who in return lost all of his belts to the watchful Devin Haney. As it currently stands, Devin Haney is the official undisputed lightweight champion, owning all four of the major world titles. And in normal circumstances, the media spotlight would primarily be reserved for him. But in this era of uber-talented lightweights and the sport's obsession with marketability, even an undisputed champion can't escape the shadow placed by Javonte Davis and Ryan Garcia, two of the biggest draws in the division. Neither have ever held a world title at the weight, but in terms of forging a super fight, no other lightweight duo has come close to doing so. And despite their fight taking place at a catchweight, the division will be turning its attention to their high-profile clash on April 22nd. Out of the entire stock of the new breed of lightweights, it's Javonte Davis who is the most seasoned and, at one point, easily the most accomplished. Good. Two, five, three. As a West Baltimore native, he grew up in a world of street gangs and an onslaught of gun violence. They tried to rob him and, you know, um, he tried to fight back, so they shot him. They shot him to death. They killed him right here. Shuttled from care home to care home, an emotionless Davis watched his parents vanish as they battled drug addiction. In Baltimore, 
where over 60% are African American and violent crime and drug related deaths have been on the rise for decades. It would take the attentiveness of his grandmother to rescue Davis and his siblings. And not before long, the boy who'd eventually be nicknamed Tank walked into a boxing gym reserved for impoverished kids. There he met Calvin Ford, who nurtured his penchant for violence and steered him away from the trappings of gang warfare and drug dealing. The disruption of those formative years hardened Davis as he went on to enjoy a successful amateur career, becoming a three-time national silver glove champion, a two-time national junior Olympic gold medalist, and the 2012 national golden gloves champion. Deciding against waiting for another three years for the 2016 Olympics, the 18-year-old eventually turned professional and had his first bout in the paid ranks in February of 2013. Six back-to-back -back knockout wins later, he signed with boxing's top talent wrangler Al Heyman and joined a star-studded stable that would later form part of a new major promotional force. But it would be the affiliation with Floyd Mayweather that really elevated Javante's status in the sport. After being introduced to the pound-for-pound -pound great in the summer of 2015 by Adrian Broner, the 5'5 powerhouse impressed in sparring and was immediately signed to Mayweather Promotions. I said, Bertain, you under Mayweather Promotions, so it's Mayweather. It would be the start of a high-profile relationship in which the young prospect would contribute with outstanding displays of punching power and highlight reel knockouts. This young man right here, Natural born superstar. But the ultimate goal is to get him to surpass me. With the correct guidance, Javante's star potential was becoming increasingly clear. And in January of 2017, a sudden leap in competition was thrust his way. In just his 17th fight and at 22 years of age, he was allocated the task of challenging the undefeated IBF super featherweight champion, Jose Pedraza. Where ordinary prospects are at least given gatekeepers or former champions in preparation for such a fight, Javante was instead being thrown into deep waters, with some sections of the boxing public favoring Pedraza's experience over the course of 12 rounds. But much to the delight of Javante and his corner team, the champion adopted a strategy that played straight into the challenger's hands. Taking the fight to his opponent, Pedraza made himself easy prey for the young power puncher, who held the obvious advantage in speed and explosiveness. And after punishing blows to the midsection, Tank set upon his wounded prey with superb efficiency and killer instinct. A virtuoso performance that had the entire boxing world in complete awe. A world champion in only his 17th professional fight, Davis would surpass his mentor and promoter, Floyd Mayweather Jr., who won his first championship in his 18th bout. Floyd, is this the future of boxing? Did the future just arrive? Is this the future of boxing? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Now keep that right hand up on your chin. You gotta keep that right hand up. There we go. Months before Javante's world's title win, a 17-year-old Ryan Garcia began his professional journey. And in the modern era of online influencers, he quickly became a social media sensation, building an enormous fan base outside the sport of boxing. Thank you, so much. Thank you. to all my fans that made this possible. We've reached 100,000 only like, what, two months in this game. Such was the scope of his presence in the online sphere, it was easy to forget Garcia's real profession and his credentials as a fighter, things which his legion of fans weren't even aware of.
Growing up in Victorville, California, he began boxing at the age of seven, following in his father's footsteps, who had a brief stint as a professional fighter. Garcia would soon be developed into a standout amateur, amassing an impressive 215 wins out of 230 bouts. Along the way, he acquired 15 national titles, with the most notable achievements being a silver medal in the 2014 Junior National Championships and a gold medal in the 2016 Youth National Championships. And shortly after his tournament success, the decision was made to turn professional. Hi guys, this is Ryan Garcia, The Flash, and this is how you hit the Cobra Bay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. His first four fights took place in Mexico due to a minimum age restriction in the United States. And two months after his 18th birthday, Garcia signed a promotional contract with Golden Boy Promotions, headed by the great Oscar de la Hoya. Man, this kid, man, this guy yeah. right here, Ryan Garcia. Big time. Wow. Big time. wow. Yeah. And much like the pairing of Javante Davis and Floyd Mayweather, the two shared an uncanny likeness that would draw immediate comparisons. Both were born to Mexican parents that emigrated to California, both turned professional in their teens, and both carried the weighty burden of becoming crossover superstars. I'm looking out in the crowd, Oscar, and it reminds me of when I was a young journalist and you were a young, up-and-coming fighter, and I would hear all these young ladies take over the stands because Oscar were fighting. Tonight, right. that phenomenon is because of King Ryan, Ryan Garcia. Exactly. Oscar de la Hoya, for his part, went on to meet his expectations by enjoying an iconic career stretching 16 years and 11 world titles in six weight classes. Now as one of the most influential promoters in the game, he possessed the experience to carve out the same journey for his latest protege. And not since the signing of another Mexican superstar in Canelo Alvarez in 2010, could Oscar have been more excited about a prospect? But I'm glad that people are, are, are loving Ryan Garcia. He's a very charismatic fighter. He, uh, but most importantly, he can fight. There he goes down. After a successful promotional debut, an impressive second round knockout, Ryan Garcia spent the next 12 months blitzing through one opponent after another with blinding hand speed and precision. All six of his opponents were finished inside the distance in 2017, becoming ESPN's Prospect of the Year as his popularity further expanded. Says, Sosa and just two punches, and Ryan Garcia comes away with a spectacular knockout. And to capitalize on the growing success of his fighting stable, Oscar de la Hoya felt the timing was right to have Ryan Garcia join Canelo Alvarez and be coached by one of the most informed trainers of the game. Eddie Reynoso. The decision proved to be fruitful, as their first fight together resulted in an impressive first round knockout over the hard hitting Filipino Romero Duno. This was followed by another step up in competition this time against the durable Francisco Fonseca, a former Javante Davis opponent, and one who'd only lost via a contentious punch to the back of the head. It was an opportunity for Garcia to showcase his abilities at a higher level and draw comparisons with other rising stars. Another electrifying left hook would send his opponent crashing to the canvas, this time with a more frightening effect. There is a new tank in the 135 pound division. This was a statement fight, and all fighters out there take a page out of the young goat, Ryan Garcia. Young goat? Sir, goat. Sir. The 21 year old was now proving to be a legit force in the lightweight class as boxing observers began salivating at the prospect of him facing the other up-and-comers of the division. It then made sense that for his next bout, the Californian native was to face his first true acid test. By far the best name on Garcia's resume, Luke Campbell brought with him an outstanding amateur pedigree, having won a gold medal at the 2012 Olympics. And although a world title in the pro ranks had so far eluded him, it was not for a lack of effort. 
a narrow points loss against Jorge Linares and a spirited effort against Vasily Lomachenko made the Englishman an experienced operator at world level. And in Ryan Garcia was seeing a golden opportunity for redemption. Because I want to prove that I'm the best in the division and I believe I'm the best in the division and once I beat Ryan, you know, that'll prove a lot of questions. Both men entered the ring in January of 2021 with the hopes of leaping to the next level. And after demonstrating impressive sharpness and speed in the opening round, Garcia was justifying his position as the bookie's clear favorite. He's looking at tight. That's sharp. Oh, a straight right hand from Garcia. And that got Campbell's attention. But a slight lapse in concentration in the second round saw him experience his first crisis in the professional ring. As he soaked up the seconds to compose himself, audiences watched on in anticipation. A make or break moment that would reveal Garcia's real character in the face of adversity. Now we're gonna see what this kid's made of. But true to his innate confidence, the youngster quickly recovered to not only survive the round, but also to mount a sturdy response to ward off any follow-up attacks. It's fight or flight if you're Ryan Garcia. And in the subsequent rounds, Garcia doubled down on his control with superior hand speed and accuracy to deplete Campbell of any confidence he gained from the knockdown. And finally, towards the dying seconds of the fifth round, took him out of the fight entirely with a rib-crunching left hook. A huge statement, proving that beyond the boyish looks and a social media career was a world-class fighter with outstanding abilities in the ring. And following this sensational display, he made it clear who he was targeting next. I just want, I really want to be a man of my word. I want to fight Tank. I know people are, you know, worried about that one, but I'm ready for it. You know, this, this fight, I showed today that I'm special. Who do you guys want? Who do you guys want? What do you want? We want Tank! We want Tank! You hear this? Let's go! Let's go! And thus began a competitive rivalry between the two fighters driven purely by the desire to outshine one another, as well as the immense rewards that awaited the victor. But reaching their lofty heights at young ages and becoming two of America's most exciting upcoming talents weren't the only similarities shared between the two hotshots. The political nature of the sport and the trappings of early success meant that both of their star-making performances would be hindered by periods of inactivity and underwhelming matchmaking. Following his stunning win over Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia was due to face Javier Fortuna in July of the same year. But just two weeks after the announcement of the fight, was forced to withdraw due to struggles with mental health. And despite a few tentative social media announcements declaring his return, Garcia's inactivity prolonged further after suffering a wrist injury in training, thus scuppering a planned November bout with Joseph Diaz Jr. Even the company of Canelo Alvarez and Eddie Reynoso did little to help Garcia on the comeback trail, with the Mexican superstar even questioning his commitment to the sport and his place in the gym. The boxing fans and media also followed suit as their attention turns towards the other lightweights making more meaningful headlines. And respectively, Javante Davis suffered obstacles of his own, interlaced with promotional issues and questionable opponent selection. Directly after the sensational world title victory over Pedraza, a successful defense was made in the UK against Liam Walsh. But a frustrating showdown with Francisco Fonseca, in which he would lose his world title on the scales, nudged Davis into a long path of overmatched opponents that were dispatched with ease. Remarkably, however, his promotional team during this period carved out a lucrative niche in which he acquired a place on Showtime's pay-per-view model. Back here in Brooklyn, New York, a record sellout crowd on hand here at the Barclays Center as we approach our main event of the evening. Packed out arenas and spectacular knockout performances over the likes of Leo Santa Cruz, 
Mario Barrios and Rolando Romero made Javante Davis the cash cow of the lower weight divisions. And with such a successful business model, there remained less of a need to share the stage with talents of a similar standing. One thing we do know, too, is that for sure the highest paid lightweight, hands down, right? Okay, I just, want, I just wanted to make sure. But considering his profession and upbringing, there still existed a fierce competitor with enormous pride. Frequent criticism, often misplaced in his direction, would be the main source of irritation for Davis, who began demanding access to more challenging opponents. Has the time come for Tank Davis to take control of his own career? It's my career, so I feel like I need to be the one to control my career. It's like I don't need to, you know, have them training wheels on them forever. You know, it's time to, you know, ride their own bike without training wheels. Six lengthy years had passed since Tank was involved in an intriguing 50-50 matchup. Fears of his prime years being wasted away against unworthy opponents were reaching a boiling point. And a turbulent relationship with his mentor and promoter, Floyd Mayweather, finally came to an end in February of 2023. And if he feels like he's grew wings where he can fly and become his own boss, more power to him. With the restrictions now removed, the 28-year-old was ready to turn his attention to higher-profiled bouts to enhance his legacy. Being heralded as part of the so-called Four Kings era, greater levels of expectations have been specifically placed on Davis and Garcia. Their larger profiles and higher price tags have created an increasingly demanding audience who feel that considering their immense talents, a bigger impact on the sport needs to be made. I paid 20,000 on Rollies. 20,000 on Rollies? Do you want to, no. Oh, tomorrow, well. if you win, I'll pay you. Awkward, but in this one, he's not the one. There's a big left hand. The lightweight division had moved on drastically during Ryan Garcia's 15-month absence. And upon his return, the 23-year-old had some catching up to do. Can we turn up the music? I've always played this, you know that. If you're an old school guy, that's what I mean, the album. He began by confirming his split from Eddie Reynoso and Team Canelo and joining forces instead with Joe Goosen. Oh, that's kind of there go the legs. A return bout against Emmanuel Tago in April of 2022 saw him shake off the ring rust in a 12-round victory. And then an impressive sixth-round knockout over the previously scheduled Javier Fortuna meant that Ryan Garcia was now back in the run of form to take on Javante Davis, who himself kept busy with a stoppage victory of his own against Hector Garcia. With both Davis and Garcia having exclusive broadcast deals with separate providers, the negotiation process to stage a fight between the two proved to be a challenging one. But by now, there had already been 12 previous months of constant back and forth talks and both men eventually took to social media to announce their clash on the 22nd of April. I'm going to beat him, I'm going to knock him out, and that's it. We'll see you April 22nd. This guy I keep talking about, he's going to hit me with a hook. He don't have nothing else but a hook. American fight fans have long been yearning for a domestic super fight to give the sport the boost it desperately needs. And despite no world title being at stake, Davis versus Garcia may well be the most eagerly anticipated bout of 2023. But the coming together of two of the hottest lightweight commodities is driven by more than just fan service. Both men recognize the enormous gains to be made should they become victorious. I'm going to walk you to the deep waters and I'm going to drown you. For Javante Davis, it will be the chance to boost his position alongside the other elite fighters of the sport, and with a greater pound-for-pound -pound presence, further strengthen his status as the money man across the entirety of three weight divisions. And for Ryan Garcia, it's to silence the critics who've questioned his character to compete in such a tough business. A social media career, modeling contracts and numerous endorsements are but just a tiny portion of his real talents and a dangerous fight of this magnitude will quell even his harshest of detractors.